Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, what a nice morning. I was really impressed by some of the customer story that we heard today. Uh, David and Mark, are, are you back? Are you here? They're not back yet. Well, when they're back, we'll give them a round of applause. I, I think these, these customer story with customer experience are, are really impressive. Um, one thing that David mentioned is that we cannot afford to get it wrong. And to me, this relates a lot with the research, the customer experience research at Gartner, uh, which my colleague Ed Thompson often starts his presentation with winner takes all. So we see a lot of companies doing great things in customer experience, but we see that divide between being number one and number two being greater and greater. And Mark also said, also talk about the concept of effortless experience. And when we talk about customer experience, about driving loyalty, also you don't want to drive disloyalty. Because often a disloyal customer can bring a larger impact than a larger la uh, a loyal customer. So really happy to be here today. I'm Nadine LeBlanc. I'm a research director at Gartner. I'm part of the customer experience group and focus on customer service. And today I want to share with you some of the best practice at Gartner. Gartner is all about helping you making better decision with insight and helping you going through change. So throughout the room, everybody has, is not at the same stage of the customer experience journey, of the customer service journey, but we can all relate. We can all relate on one good customer experience that made us customer for life. Who ran through an experience like that in the room? No one? No, you cannot relate as far as being a customer, some things at some point that made you customer for life? I think I can. Yes. So let's start with um, this formula. So the theory of experience. So I was glad when Egain approached me for this event. And uh, this, this formula has been uh, part of the Egain uh, uh, offering and event for a little while now. And I was, it was interesting to see throughout the presentation the usage of this formula and trying to align it with concept, trying to align it in concept to give the best customer experience and make the most of customer service. So when we talk about this formula, and, I, and I, I've tried throughout this presentation to align this formula with some of our concept and some of our research at Gartner, it starts with digital business. So making vision to value of digital business. And there are four pillars. As you may know, you have the, your resource, your partner, bringing customer value, and of course, technology. For today, we will focus on emerging trend in technology and best practice. We'll start from the 10,000 feet to the detail, the technical detail. And where does it start? For my part, I come from a background of 20 years of implementation and architecture of customer-facing application. I had the chance to sit at that table. You may have a seat at that table. You may be in charge of customer experience. You may be in charge of technology that drive customer experience. The important part is to understand who owns the customer experience, and it will change over time. But getting that seat at the table, helping your colleague being at the table, helping that person who is in charge of customer experience, and as you can see, there are many roles. We start seeing, we estimate that there's about 5,000 customer experience leader, appointed leaders specifically for customer experience across the globe. A lot of them are in North America and Canada, but we are st starting to see these role across the world. And they report sometime, probably half of them would report to the board, the CEO or senior leadership. Identify this person, it may be you, will drive customer experience because customer service success depends on it. And you may be feeling it. You feel challenged from all angles. Your customer raising expectation. The executive wants to see differentiation in ROI right away. Your employee, your colleague that may still be working in silo for various reasons. 
and they, that they may not be ready to that culture change of moving to end-to-end -end sporting, end-to-end -end customer journey and customer experience. And of course, aging technology, complex technology, legacy system that you have to maintain, lots of pressure. So why should you care about this presentation today? Because your peer are, because your competitor are. Based on our recent six innovation st uh, study that we did um, of more than 200 uh, CX leader or role that were directly involved to CX, we start seeing that an ROI, return on investment, of 62%, and this is a significant increase from last year's survey. And half of them are in an IT-focused role. So very important shift from last year. In fact, another Gartner survey stated that 81% see CX as part or complete competitive advantage in the next two years. So like some of the, one of the customer study, a case study today mentioned that um, it's velocity that we're um, in R&D for process, not necessarily for product or service because we are in the experience economy. And it's not enough to develop your product and customer service. You need to stage experience. So your customer service needs to help support customer experience. So what I wanna do today is to review key three challenge, challenge that a lot of our Gartner clients are facing, and I'm sure that a lot of you are facing. So how do you balance competing pr priorities and you sustain the pace of change, so we'll talk about that. How to choose between the many technology that drives customer experience and ultimately drive the, the overall customer experience, so customer service driving customer experience. And how to ensure that the sum of these technology can benefit both customer and organization. And as you can see, this relates to the element of the theory of experience when we talk about digital experience agent experience, customer experience, and business experience. So how do you enable and maintain a pace of change? It's actually very difficult. I was glad to see in the presentation earlier the pyramid of running the business, changing the business, and transforming the business. Because it is very hard to keep a 50-50 rate of change. Most company will have a 70 to 30 split. So 70 person running, 30 person changing. If you are a startup, sure, this ratio will be different. You're talking about 80 person change and 20 person run. And what most digital business seek to is a 50-50 split. But 50-50 is really hard to maintain. Not all of our organization can do it. So what do you do? And these percentage are up to up to 30%. Your organization may be going through changes, through a merger, through an acquisition. There's a lot of uh, external and internal factor that will drive this percentage, but you can use it as a guide. If you are below 30%, seek to increase at 30%. See what, what, what this would look like. If you are at 30% and are moving through digital transformation and digital optimization budget, Seek target 50% and see what this would look like. It doesn't need to be overnight. Could be for your one year, three years, five years roadmap. Make a plan, but seek to go through these percentage. So this is all good budget wise, but how do we make this happen? So who's familiar with the pace layer methodology at Gartner? Have you seen this, this, this graph before? A few of you have. So this is the pace layer application strategy is defining three types of system. You have your system of record, which are relate, that relates to your common process. Not that they cannot be innovative, but they relate to your common process. You have your system of differentiation, which is your current competitive advantage. Some industry specific system system that will differentiate you from your competitor, and then system on innovation, 
that is about future competitive advantage. And this approach is used by Gartner clients since 2010. It was actually inspired from a, a book uh, written by Sue and Bread, a, a graduate from Stanford in California. And what uh, Brand wanted to do initially is to build, see if a building could be resilient to change through, with the many occupant over the year. And with, with that building, he identified three layers, which was the land where the building was built. And then you add the stuff, which could change the painting, the furniture. And then in between, there was these more long-term project like the HVAC and the electrical system and plumbing. And this what is what inspired Gartner uh, Pace Layer. Obviously, the system of record is not like the land. Your system of record needs to be stable. And we are often in, in organization, and me included throughout my career, everyone wants to work on the big shiny project, the project of uh, virtual customer assistant, augmented reality. This will not work. The amount of change that you are about to embark will not work without a solid foundation, without a system of record. It's time to make system of record cool again. M make that a logo. Make sure that some of your resource are allocated to system of record. This will be one of the biggest challenge a couple of years from now. So it's time to invest in the system of record. As you can see, some of the benefit of using the pace layer, you see them listed next to it. This was part of a survey that we did through our, with our clients throughout the year. Um, and we will use this pace layer methodology to describe some of the emerging trend in technology and, and best practice. So it's all good. It looked pretty, nice little picture of this diagram. But really, in your day to day, your pace layer will look like this. So it's an evolution. You, your uh, system of record, differentiation, innovation will grow over time. They will go to their own cycle, run, grow, and transform. It's very important to think about how you move system between layers. What are the transitions? So allowing you to experiment when it's something for future competitive advantage, but allowing you also to adopt and, and have a smooth transition between these technologies. So when we talk about budget, budget number, also plan for the transition. And this is where typically something go wrong because people get really excited, especially for its system of innovation. And yes, are we ready to go to production? Can we flip the switch? That's not always the case. So how to choose among the many technology? And for that, we'll go back quickly to customer service in the context of customer experience. So what it is not, we, talk, we talked about that in the morning that customer experience is not customer service, but customer service play an important part. It's not an, just another name for UX. It's not just your CRM system. And you have, you have some clients who've been through uh, a profound transformation and are just about finish with their CRM implementation. Can we get a break? I would say start the planning now. It's, it, 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 it is good, like I said, to have a stable system of record, uh, but you need to start thinking about these layers. So if you do not have current project that per pertains to system of differentiation of system of innovation, it is time to start. What customer experience is about? Satisfaction, loyalty, advocacy. And we talked about making the experience effortless. You want to make sure that you do not drive this loyalty as well. Here's our official definition of customer experience at Gartner. As you can see, throughout the day, we have a common definition of customer experience. It relates to the perception and feelings. And it could be based on a one-off inter interaction or many interaction, and it changed constantly. This is why you have to make it a practice, a practice of this reacting and this designing interaction. So sometimes it happens by accident. 
Some of you may, may be, have, have, have great employee process and the Solid Technology Foundation, but you need to make it a practice because your peer, your industry, your, in your industry, your competitor are starting. And in two years, we're going to see a lot of good innovation comes, coming out of these project of differentiation and innovation. So where do you start? So you already have in-house, from a customer service standpoint, a lot of application that you can start with. What I did in this picture is that I listed the common category of application that pertains to customer service. At Gartner, we have an architecture framework that we call the Customer Engagement Hub. And to build a Customer Engagement Hub, we see a lot of our clients using this technology. And as you can see today with the offering uh, of, of eGain, there are some bucks that are being checked in some of these, these technology area. These technology area needs to support your customer life cycle. And we define the customer life cycle in buy and own and eight different, eight, eight different phase of the customer life cycle. Why eight? Um, you'll see different variation of a customer life cycle from two to 10 to 12 to 15. Eight, typically at Gartner, we love the definition. We love coming up with model. It's usually a work of many months and lots of peer review and lots of different uh, variation. And typically eight is the number just large enough so that you can cover multiple phase, but also remember it. And what we see some of the best customer experience leader typically will focus on one of these stage per year. So when we talk about innovation, make a roadmap. It can be aligned with your business strategy, can be aligned with your technology roadmap. One year, three years, five years. Start thinking about the different stage and start mapping the priority on the different stage that you want to uh, improve. Another thing to think about is where people are investing. So this is another uh, slide from our CX innovation survey on the key technology where people are investing, where they invested this year, where they will invest next year. And you can see that customer analytics is at the top. And it's been at the top for the last three, four years. Out of the customer analytics, customer journey analytics is a very important part. So you can start as a starting point, start with what you have in the house, do an inventory, look at this graph, see where people are investing, and start the prioritization of these initiatives. Emerging technology, so another part of our survey. As you can see, a lot of people are planning, the keyword for, for this, these results are planning around emerging technology. So lots of activity, lots of experimentation, lots of pilot. If we talk about uh, VCA and, and virtual pers personal assistant, the implementation and the go live rate is still lower than, than this percentage, than 32%. If we talk about blockchain, the amount of blockchain project in production today is less than 1%. So you still have time, but these emerging technology on these lists, if we're thinking the next 18 months, a lot of them are in progress. A lot of the projects are in progress and will go live within 18 months. So if they are not on your list, make sure that you are making the conscious decision to add them in your roadmap or not. And that if you, if you don't, you know the reason why. So let's look at all three system. So here's a summary slide. We're not going to go through all the technology. You can take a picture if you want, review it with your team. So these are all the, I would say, common technology that we see for system of innovation. You may say, well, there's more than customer service in that list. And yes, we, we left the everything related to customer experience outside of customer service, because for customer service, you have to think about the transition. You have to think about the sales application, moving to customer service, 
and you need to think about, for example, digital commerce moving to customer service. So as you are planning for your customer service roadmap, you need to be mindful of all the customer experience technology for that end-to-end -end customer journey. So these are the common system of innovation that we see people are researching for their next competitive advantage, but it all depends on your organization maturity model. Some of you may have the system as system of record or system of differentiation. But in general, cross industry, these are the one we are seeing for system of innovation. And we'll talk about the system in the context of three of our strategic trends. So let's start with immersive experience. So we see a lot of uh, experimentation and pilot and planning around immersive experience. Related to customer service, in the context of training, we talked about agent experience. In the context of field service, we see a lot of use case for technician. And you see it in other area and in manufacturing. Uh, for example, you see people who experimented for many years uh, in the air airline and manufacturing. Airbus is one of the company who's been leading some of the research, a lot of partnership in that area to uh, find a different use case, not only for maintenance, but for customer experience that they can explore with augmented reality or virtual reality. You have other company like uh, Michael Core when Facebook released their augmented reality ad. Michael Core was the first one releasing an ad, and, and since then a lot of people had follow. So you have a wide spectrum of different complexity for augmented reality and virtual reality that can be implemented. And I will highlight to your attention the Gartner um, strategic planning assumption. And the strategic planning assumption are typically a three to five year scenario that Gartner analysts issue every year. And these go through uh, a, a methodology process where we submit them, we review them, we collect primary research, secondary research, we discuss with our clients, and use these strategic planning assumption as a call to action. You can bring them to your organization, debate them internally, and, and these are typically assumptions that can help you in your planning process. So you'll see for each trend, I selected the top one for you to look at today. So now, intelligent things. So when the way we define intelligent things at Gartner, you have four main categories. So you have the autonomous vehicle, the drones, the robotic, and AI-driven IoT. For example, I take the case of uh, a company, a, a speaker manufacturer, who implemented uh, uh, IoT on their device, so they were able to have uh, tests being run and run the metadata on their speaker. And they created an integration with their customer service application. And now what it's allowing them to do is after a few cases that gets open on the customer service side, they are able to turn around and put diagnostic tests on the speaker, or it could be any other parts, uh, and be able to proactively identify any customer that would run into this problem. So think about it, proactive service. And we start seeing many cases of that. But proactive service is not enough. At Gartner, we talk about business moment, the ability to turn around and uh, plan for unexpected event. So you will say, you need to have some type of planning. You cannot just react to something that would be completely out of the blue. But as you think about the intelligent thing, think about unplanned scenario. Think about the agility that this can give you and the scenario that could potentially occur where you could not only turn in proactive service, but even move this scenario to R&D. The example, the same speaker company realize on the metadata that a lot of people were naming their speaker uh, bathroom because they were located in the bathroom. So they release a new line of waterproof speaker. 
So a lot of scenario that can be linked to intelligent things and customer service. Digital twin. So digital twin, another technology that use some of IoT that will be very important in a lot of industry. But I think at this point, these are some of the newer use case and technology. Digital twin should at least have a place in your roadmap to evaluate if the technology would be applicable. Again, talking about the yearly, three years, five years roadmap for your industry. Digital twin, we, when we think about digital twin, we often think about buildings and large equipment. Actually, digital twin, when you compile your customer data, you could also have digital twin for your customer. The concept is still very nascent, we hear some of the, the, the initial implementation, but it's, it is important to evaluate the technology. Now, system of differentiation. You get the list too. Uh, take a picture, review it with your team. These are the most common system of differentiation that we see uh, being evaluated at this moment. So current competitive advantage. And I would say for this uh, system, the planning should be focused on the one year or three years roadmap for a lot of these technology. Again, depending on your industry, they may not be applicable, or if you are B2B or B2C, but make sure you review them all and make the conscious decision if they need to be added for your roadmap. Intelligent app and analytics. So we talked about the transition between the pace layer being very important we start seeing intelligent app, and I take an example in banking, and there, there's a lot of good intelligent app out there. Uh, I'll name one example today, but there are many out there. So when Bank of America was re ready to release their intelligent app, within two months, they had one million user. And in other contexts, you can even have more than that in the initial months. So be ready to make the transition when you are ready to move from pilot or large or, or small uh, list of user to move to your system of differentiation, plan for that transition. This wasn't done overnight. This was carefully planned and it was budget associated to it. Conversational platform, very important as well. The way we define conversational platform at Gartner, there are three level, wide spectrum of conversational platform. So it can be in the case of a question, a conversation, or a contextualized dialogue. Like we see today, again, I've been in the virtual customer assistant uh, space for a long time. So we're talking about product that would handle a contextualized conversation. But for your part, you need to make the decision, again, where virtual customer assistance will be. Are we talking the next competitive advantage, innovation, differentiation? And eventually, will be part of a system of record. So gauging your level of conversational platform and where this should fit in your system, your different type of system would be important. Now, another change, um, which is, doesn't pertain to a specific technology, but I would say a, a trend around uh, event-driven model. So complex event processing is not, uh, is, is, is not a new technology. We see it in telecom, in banking, in transportation, in airline. But moving to an event-driven model for customer service that relates customer experience is new for a lot of organizations. And here are the four key pillars of moving to an ever-driven model. We're talking about a lot about having contextualized information. This context could expand to situ situational awareness. We see a lot of advertising that use weather pa pattern. That would be considered situational awareness. And in order to do that, you're talking about a profound transformation that needs to be carefully planned over time. 
So to switch to an event-driven model, these are the four pillars that need to be put in place. So some level of stream analytics, situation awareness that go beyond, context, beyond contextual insights and really drive and is, is, is calculated with external event as well, not only internal event, but external event. Real-time insights, which relates to contextual insights. And then the concept of business moment that we talked about. Because what is the value of bringing an event-driven model is the able to react in real time. So for a part, think about event-driven model. Think about the expertise that you may already have in-house. Depending on your industry, you may already have people in-house who are specialists around event-driven model. And start planning for all three systems to move towards that shift. This will be a profound shift, and I have to say, even with our Gartner clients, we are not seeing this enough on IT project. We are not seeing this enough. Now, system of record. I talked about making system of record cool again. So system of record, I love you recognize this list. These are typically, I would say typically, again, it depends on the industry and your maturity, uh, customer experience maturity around this system. But I would highlight three key trends, very important trends. So we talked about handling multi multiple, uh, multi-channel interaction. So the goal is to able to, to research and pilot multiple channel, but again, you can decide which channel, combination of channel can be implemented for the right use case. However, when you look at Vander, as have the full complete list of digital engagement channel, and as you can see on this list, this gives you the list of what Gartner, uh, the, the list of digital engagement channel that are currently in place and our prediction. So here you'll see the, the growing customer service channel in the next four years. And then we are seeing shrinking channel. Again, if we look at a cross industry average, we estimate that phone conversation will drop from 40% to 12% in four years. Again, cross industry prediction. For your part, take these statistics and prediction, map them with your current data, look at the industry standard, and start doing a prioritization of these channel, and more importantly, look at the combination of channel for use case. But more than often, uh, we go in vendor selection process and we list the current channel that we, we have planned for the next year or two and we don't think about all the emerging channels. Start asking this question now. Start researching these, these channels now. Because you could be ready and you could decide to implement these channels but wait before opening them to your customer. But the goal would be ready and the mix, the the standard in terms of customer experience by industry is still changing. A lot of our clients are experimenting what is the best blend of channel for the best use case. And being ready, like we heard today uh, earlier in the presentation, the, uh, a, a, a lot of vendors are adding A-B testing in their functionality to be able to do that trial and error on pilot group or small group in production, to be able to test different blend of channel. Be prepared for that for the next 18 months. Now, master data management. For some of you, it can be a system of record for multiple years. We talked about that switch to event-driven, which is a profound shift in the master data management area. So one thing to add in your plan, and you'll you'll probably need the help of some of your best people and external help as well. So when I said it's time to make system of record cool again, your actual data man master management architecture may actually be something that slow you down a year or two from now. So very important to revisit. If you don't have master data management in house, ask yourself, are we at a point or where do we draw the line where we'll need 
some level of data, master data management, doesn't need to be a full uh, solution. It could be the app application. It could even be um, your, your, some of your CRM vendor that act as a, a basic master data management solution. So there's a spectrum of solution for your part. You need to understand your need, but this will be very important, again, to make a stable foundation for your system of record. If you do not do that, your system of differentiation and innovation are at risk of failing. And finally, integration. So we are entering, now that a, a, a lot of industry are moving to cloud, we are seeing a lot of additional integration challenge. So it, it's, it's gonna get a little bit more complex before it gets better. I would advise to look at the different um, integration approach. I would say that when we look at our roadmap for customer engagement and customer service, we see a large amount of our clients looking at hybrid inter and integration for at least the next three to five years. When we talk about the cloud only, although it's an objective on the roadmap, this would be less than 10% of the scenario. So less than 10% of organization would be ready for a full cloud only uh, uh, a project or, or, or initiative. So we will be an hybrid world for at least the next three to five years. And finally, like I said, I told you we would start at 10,000 feet and go at the architecture level, take a picture of that, bring it to your team. I would say this is one of the architecture framework that resonate very well with our clients. Um, we call it the customer engagement hub. Our clients may call it different way. The principle behind the customer engagement hub is to promote persistent and consistent interaction. And typically I would say Today, creating a customer engagement hub would need a blend of three to four vendor. We expect in the next year, we're gonna start seeing offering that provides you an end-to-end -end customer engagement hub. You'll see, these, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of solution around customer engagement. Uh, I would say a, a lot of them will, will support part of this architecture framework. Uh, but not all vendors can support the entire framework, but it is coming. So feel free to reuse the customer engagement hub as a starting point. Align it, align it with your digital transformation or digital optimization project, uh, and you can use that as a starting point. So I'm hoping that we, we did a very quick overview but having access to these slides and having the list of technology for system on innovation, differentiation, and record give you a great starting point to do this exercise, do the inventory in-house, look at where people are investing, use the list as checklists, and this gives you a great starting point to plan next year, the next three years, and five years in technology roadmap. Now for the last part, our last challenge, how do we ensure that it helps both customer and the organization? So the business experience part of the equation. So I wanna talk a little bit about customer journey. So customer journey and customer life cycle, we talked about for customer service, elevating to customer experience. And customer journey are becoming more complex. Actually, actually this is a, uh, uh, a nice representation by Cisco, who in a retail context, look at the different customer journey. So if you look at the first box, uh, the, the font is a little small. In the pre-Amazon era, there was really three customer journey in retail. You could buy in the store, in catalog, or both. Now we add the multi-channel use case. Again, for these three core buying behavior, you're at 40 or 50 different, year, different journey. If you add all the emerging technology that we talked today, you're about, the, 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 the diagrams say 800, but you're about 1,000 
different journey that needs to be considered. This is why agility, not only defining the, the core customer journey, supporting them through technology, but also planning for all these different type of variation and the ability to change quickly is what will give you current competitive advantage today and future competitive advantage. I use this example of customer journey and you'll find a lot of them. You'll find a lot of them on online. There's some great example, not only in our research, but overall. I picked this one in particular. This is a health insurance customer journey. I would say a little bit on the, the complex, more complex side. What's very interesting in that journey, and, and you, won't, you, you won't see it um, on this diagram, but you can, uh, uh, we'll give you access to, to the slides, is the orange part. And, and if you look at the yellow dot and the red dot, you see that the satisfaction is decreasing. And pay close attention. Moment of high satisfaction followed by high dissatisfaction, we call them moment of truth. So you have your business moment that are different, we talked about them earlier, and then moment of truth. And when you have a high dissatisfaction followed by, a high satisfaction followed by a high dissatisfaction, this is the part that you want to look at very quickly. And in that case, these moments were not even related to the internal technology for the organization. In the health insurance journey, they found out that the, the person was having high satisfaction moments starting to find all these third-party websites that will help them pick a health insurance. And we're all consumer and customer, so we all do our research online. So when you find sites that help you make a decision, high satisfaction. But then they realized that a lot of the health insurance third party sites, some of them are better than other, but compare in terms of cost, not in terms of option, followed by high dissatisfaction. Customer experience is impacted, and this is something out of your organization. So what did some of our uh, health insurance client did is that they understood that drop in satisfaction, they understood that external process, and they were able to put agent communication, agent co-browsing, agent that can advise during this process to make it better. So again, we talked about this morning that it's not always about technology. It's about people and process, and sometimes it's even external of your organization. So this is why I like to talk about this example in particular, and when you look at your customer journey, and again, these customer journey are more advanced, if you're just starting doing customer journey mapping, a whiteboard exercise will go a long way. Start with a whiteboard exercise, and then you can continue and engage a team, but you can, you can all start doing a draft of customer journey, and be mindful of these moments that may be external to your company. Now, here, going back to our customer experience survey, if we dive into some of the reali realize ROI, so these are the um, ROI realized in customer experience. Map them to your customer service strategy and make sure you, you, you use them as a starting point. And again, the correlation between customer experience and uh, increase in revenue and other ROI is something that is still uh, fluid. And it will always be because customer experience is about perception. There's a lot of trial and error. Even some of the brand that we talked earlier today, some of the most recognized company are still figuring out the correlation because it is fluid. So don't hesitate, have this conversation. Think about these metrics first. Often when we talk about project methodology, often during project metrics come too late in the process. Discuss what success looks like at first. Have this conversation. How are we going to measure it? And we know that this definition will be fluid, so we need to do a lot of trial and error. And 
have, even for customer service project, bring people from various department, even if it's not part of the current project, it will be over time a longer initiative. And often these, I would say some of our clients say that it can become a heated discussion because customer experience success looks different for different people. And be mindful, when you have a heated discussion, when people have different ways of calculating success, this is where you're on to something. This is where these will be the most important requirements for your project. And know that executive will have different priority. Make sure that you can address, again, in the one year, three years, five years, priority at the CEO, CEO level, but also at the CFO level, and they have competing priority. And lastly, when we talk about digital transformation at, at Gartner, it is, off, it is about transformation of business model and creating new customer experience. At this point, I would say that uh, less than 50% uh, when we survey as far as digital transformation of organization that do pure digital transformation. A lot of them will call the, the initiative digital transformation, but we're talking about optimization, improvement of current business model. Whether you do one or the other, and about 51% in that survey are doing a blend of both, start planning now. You're typically the, the digital optimization will be the, the, the first two to three years moving to a transformation that will be in your five years roadmap. So here you have a couple of examples of case study in banking, manufacturing, airline. It gives you a starting point as far as a digital transformation. Now, recommendation. It's okay to have multiple technology in-house. Start classifying them by system of innovation, differentiation, and record. Make sure you pay close attention at your system of record. Use the pace layer as a guiding point. Use this technology as a checklist to start on your own map. And be patient. Focus on the initial improvement that will bring the most value. And like I said, they could be external to your company. Think about these moments of high satisfaction and high dissatisfaction. So I'm hoping that our uh, survey insights and model will help you through your journey. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.